Hi everyone, I'm Matt from THKP, and today we're going to look into Flutter's friction simulation utility and see how we can use it to simulate a block sliding across the surface. Alright, so basically what we have here is just the default main that Flutter generates for you when you create Flutter Create. And what we have for the body, we basically just have a scaffold here with the amber background color, and we can see this is the result here. And all of our code is going to go into this sliding block example. So let's, let's pop over there and see what we have. Nothing too exciting here. We have a stateful widget. Uh, we will need state for, for this widget. And um, we've got our sliding block example state. And this is a ticker provider state mix-in because we're going to need to do some, some animation here. So let's start to build the scene. So let's say we're going to have a positioned, we're going to put the floor, so to speak. So let's say the child is a container and let's make it colors.blue and we'll give it a height. And we'll say, oh, actually we want this, we'll make this a por uh, proportion of the height of the screen. So let's save the screen size. All right, so if you're not familiar, uh, we've got this media query dot uh, of context dot size. And that just tells us what the size of the screen is. So, uh, and now we'll make the height of this block uh, screen size dot height divide by three, say. And let's see, this should, uh, and now we have our little platform. So uh, now uh, we're gonna have our, our little block uh, that we wanna animate, so let's add that. We'll have another positioned element. The height is 50, width is 50, just a square. Let's say the bottom is screen size dot height divided by three. Oh, nice. We've got an offending widget. We don't have a child here, so that's that's our issue. So let's make this a container and a color colors dot red. All right, so now uh, we've got our uh, our stack. Since our alignment was center, we uh, are, it's right in the center. Let's say that we want we want to give it a little room. We want to nudge it to the right, so we'll give it just a little bit of room to uh, to breathe. So we'll just put it uh, relative to the left edge. We'll say screen size dot width uh, divided by four. Okay, so it's a little it's it's a little farther over to the thing for good measure. We'll make it centered, and so we'll subtract half the width of the block. This is pretty much going to be the whole scene. Uh, we just have our little block, and it's on this platform. But we are going to want to give ourselves a couple of utilities, just like little buttons that we can use to interact with our cube. So let's add another position, and we'll say bottom uh, screen size dot height divided by maybe six, and we'll say child uh, row and children, and there'll be two buttons, and here's two of these. Okay, and we'll have one button, which is for nudging, and then one button, which is for resetting. All right, we will, Let's add these. We're going to add these as methods to this utility. We'll have a private uh, void method, which is nudge block. And we will have void reset block. OK, so we've got these placeholders. We won't put anything in there just yet, but uh, but we'll be able to plug these in. Uh, nudge block. Nope, we don't want to call it. We just want to reference it. Getting overzealous on the autocomplete, I guess. Uh, on pressed reset block. Okay, cool. So we've got our we've got our two buttons. Hopefully these are somewhere reasonable. Reset. Okay. Well, let's just put a little size block in, box in here so we can tell the difference. 
with uh, 20. All right, so we've got our nudge, we've got a reset. Uh, they don't do anything, uh, but there they are, they're beautiful. So now we are going to, uh, we're going to add an animation controller because as we've discussed, this is going to be an animated block that is, behaves ostensibly physically accurately. So let's add our animation controller. So say animation controller. And then in our init state here, we will, uh, let's we'll set that equal to animation controller dot unbounded. By default, animation controller will limit the values it emits from zero to one. And generally, if you just have an abstract animation that runs from the beginning to the end, that might work. But in this case, uh, we want this uh, will eventually we'll want this physics simulation to emit um, offset values for this cube and unbounded just allows us to emit values that are less than zero or greater than one so that is what that is doing for us all right so we're not doing anything with this animation controller yet but let's actually wrap our cube here this is our this is our square. We're going to wrap this. I like to use the autocomplete uh, from VS Code. Uh, I will use Stream Builder, but then I will sneak it into an animation, animated builder. Uh, it doesn't have a type argument. This is an animation. And then this is block animation controller. Oh. Uh, and now what we will do is we will add the value of the animation controller to the left edge. And, and what this means is as we're, once we start doing the simulation, as the value of the animation controller increases, this block will get push, pushed further away from the edge. So, and just, just to call out one little useful bit of information about animated builders, um, I always try to keep the animated builders as tight, tightly scoped as possible. Obviously, we could have rebuilt this whole stack, but um, it just saves a little bit of work if we wrap it around only the part that we that will actually need to change as the animation changes. So, okay, but now uh, we actually want to start doing some some simulation. So let's first do the reset because uh, that's the simpler of the two. We'll say uh, by friction. All right, so this is probably complaining because I don't haven't uh, imported. So we'll import flutter friction or flutter, flutter physics, excuse me. And what we can see is that it takes three values. It takes drag, position, and velocity. Uh, they all seem like they would roughly make sense, but um, it's not exactly clear at least to me, what what they do uh, at the outset. So uh, for right now, though, uh, we can rest assured that we don't want it to do anything. We don't want it to be moving. It shouldn't have any uh, distance. And we don't really care about drag since it's not moving anyway. Uh, so this is kind of a dummy. We can say the non-moving simulation. And so now we have... Now what we want to do, now that here's where it gets interesting, we say block animation controller dot animate with. I'm assuming you've already seen animation controllers before, but this is one slightly, a uh, slightly unusual way to use it. Uh, so you can say, oh, animate with this physics simulation. Uh, and so now we can quick reset. <sighs> All right, so this is a subtle error, but might be useful to talk about. So our animation is null. And you might say, well, clearly I'm initializing it in, in its state just up above. Why, how could this be null? Uh, the problem is that this in its state ran a while ago, the first time we started the app and it didn't have anything in it before. It wasn't initializing the block animation controller. And on hot reload, it doesn't rerun in that state. It tries to keep everything stateful uh, on the reloads, which is why now that we try to 
do this animated builder, it's complaining, oh, our animation is null. So um, I'll put my money where my mouth is, and uh, in theory, if we restart now, uh, we should see uh, we should see it work. And we're back. So that was that was where that was come coming from. There, a little bit of a little bit of hot reload trivia. Uh, so anyway, so we're back, and now we can click our reset button, and nothing happens. And that's what what should happen. Okay, so. Now we get to the interesting part where we're supposed to be quote unquote nudging our block. And so the code for this is going to be very similar. We'll, we'll start with the same values. And here we start to, it starts to be important what these numbers actually mean, right? So what is, what are reasonable values for drag? The ledger documentation doesn't actually provide a lot of useful information about like what kind of behavior you might expect from different values of drag, uh, position or velocity for that matter. And since we don't know what these good values are, like I think it makes sense for us to we'll play around with them. And so to that end, we will create a couple of sliders underneath. So let's actually wrap this in a column. So we'll have the row and then we'll have another column here. Here. Well, our, our cup runneth over. So we are going to move the this column of sliders. We're actually going to put that at the top. Because we're not using the top for anything right now. We'll say top zero. We'll say, all right, so let's see. Should they, this should look kind of like it was before. We've got these floating disembodied sliders. Uh, let's add some values here. Okay. And now let's go back and we will create some state for these for these sliders. Okay, and then on change, so we will set state drag equals val. Nice, and we will copy this. Uh, yeah, lovely. All right, so we've got our sliders here. There's initialized there, uh, and then the last thing we need to do is actually consume them from the friction simulation. So here we go. So we'll say drag. Okay. So now we should be ready to go. For the moment, let's just drag the drag down and we will nudge our block and, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. You can, you can just barely see it move, but, um, but let's turn up the velocity a little bit and then we can try again. Okay, so we start to see a little bit of a, of a motion and so we'll hit, we can hit reset and then we can nudge it again. Um, so we're learning that velocity 10 might even be like too low of a value for velocity. So, um, and, and this makes sense, right? So velocity is the number in pixels per second that this, that this block is going to be moving because that's how, that's how we're using it. It's, it doesn't care what the units are the, for this friction simulation, but the way we're using it is we're using it to define the the uh, part of the offset of this block from the left edge, which means that just kind of by dint of the fact that we're using it for pixels, it represents pixels. So um, given that, maybe we can bump this up a little more and say, let's say 100. So let's, uh, let's even go all the way more. We'll nudge. And we see our block come to a little stop. So we're starting to learn about like what, what velocity means, which admittedly is one of the easier ones to understand. Um, but then we also have drag. So as I was learning about the friction simulation, I thought, well, if 0.5 uh, creates a certain amount of drag, well, turning it to 2 would create um, a decent bit more. If, as we know from physics, right, drag is a force. <laughs> And the higher the drag, the more resisting motion that you get. 
course, right? So we turn our drag up, we should see it slow down more quickly, right? Well, let's give that a shot. And it doesn't. And I, I don't know how clear this, this came across, but and maybe we can uh, dial up the drag even more, but it becomes very apparent that the block just seems to want to accelerate out into infinity. So we quickly learned that our assumption that this that more drag equals more resistance is false. And I would argue drag is a really bad name for this parameter. Uh, it's more like velocity uh, factor, if you will. So the way I, I think about this and I reason about it is that this number is mul being multiplied by the velocity of it at every step to get the new velocity. So a higher drag actually indicates a lower friction and even negative friction as you get above one. So the last value we haven't really talked at all about is position. And this one's slightly weirder or slightly less initially intuitive. So let's, let's try this out and we can kind of see what, what happens here. So we'll reset. And actually it is kind of hard to see. So we'll, let's bump this value a little higher. Okay, so 80. So we'll reset our cube. Nudge. And there it's, it's obvious. So it pops. Uh, like this will say, oh, it'll immediately start emitting values that uh, start at the position. Um, and you might ask yourself, like, why would that ever be useful? Um, and the answer is that, uh, let's say, for example, you want to allow a user to drag something and then let it go, that becomes very useful when you say, oh, okay, when we do the handoff between when the user is dragging the item and it's being physically simulated, it's useful to be able to say, oh, start this thing this distance away from the initial point so you can get a smoother behavior for the handoff. Um, and that's really all that position is is for, or at least it's the most useful thing I've come up with to, to use position for. Well, there you have it. Now we have our nudgeable cube, and it's doing its physically accurate, accurate simulation of friction. So uh, keep an eye out for upcoming videos where we, uh, where we talk more about physics-based animations in Flutter. Thanks for checking out this tutorial. If you found this useful, give us a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing more, don't hesitate to subscribe.